Galatians chapter 5. I got this word, most of it was for me, but one of the things that I um, needed to say was that this message is not just a message. It's a, it's a brand. And I want you to know that, guess what? You are, you are marked for this thing. You're distinctive. Sent to your feet, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. I'll talk a little bit about this a little bit more. Chris, I will say that I am hoping that it's a boy. I'm hoping. Oh. <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, y'all. Yeah. They just say you can keep trying. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just said I'm hoping. I didn't say what God said. <laughs> Are you done? You got it? Amen. <laughs> excuse me, about, excuse me, business. Everybody know how, how he is. Y'all don't hear the eyes up here. And I'll say he's young. He, 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 he keeps trying. Amen. <laughs> Oh, uh, before I go, I think it's two people's birthday here today. I'm sorry, Miss Chicana. Am I right? It's your birthday today? Let's give her a happy birthday. Amen. Happy birthday. Amen. 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 And everybody in the seat but one of our intercessors and praise and worship uh, leaders, uh, Miss Ingrid, it's her birthday. Amen. 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 I bless them. We're on the doctrine. After a while, we're going to get to say East Side Out Loud. Galatians. <laughs> we're going to be from Radoville. Amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. When you have it, say, I got it. I got it. I'll be reading New American Standard. We are going to get to heaven if you read King James. Amen. <laughs> For you were called to freedom, brethren. I do not turn your freedom into an, an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Praise team was on it this morning. I don't tell them what to say, but hey, they in the spirit. Amen. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, in the statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. The flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. Mm that you may not do, but you please. Amen. You may want to do it, but you won't supposed to do it. Ooh, y'all don't want to hear this today. I didn't either. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger. Outbursts of anger. <laughs> Disputes. Dissensions and factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing. We can go, we can have an altar call now. We ain't got to preach. And things like these of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such things, there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. Lord, we thank you for the day. And we honor you. Thank you you have marked all of us to be distinctive. Thank you that you have marked the body of Christ as a whole to be distinct. Change us from the inside out, God. Renew our mind on today. God, let us not go out the same way we come in. Give us a word inside our spirit today that will transform us. Bind us together as a corporate body because we know who we are individually, but we also need to know who we are corporately. Transforms our heart, the circumcise our heart that we may receive, our ears that we may hear, loose us to do your will. And God, when we walk out of here, we will be agents of transformation. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray that everyone say amen. amen. As you look at your neighbor, say God's, God's DNA. DNA. Yeah, well, last week we spoke about, what we spoke about last week, we came from 
the song saying, I, wonderful I am. And we came from the, 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 the psalm and said that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And we talked about the thing of being uh, fearfully mean is to be reverently made. We talked about how God know, knows us intimately. We talked about how he wove us together, and, we, and in that weaving together, that is, he, he took his time with us. That he doesn't rush in the process of making us. And, and a lot of times, we want to rush people in their transformation. Now, I'm not saying you're not supposed to just, just be taking a cakewalk, but how many of you know transformation and sanctification takes time? Amen. And so if God said, I wove you together, he, he looked at him and said, I wove you together. I made you in a particular way. Then he goes on and he tells them, he says, look, I know, you, you know my unformed substance. He said, before I was even formed in the earth, we're telling him he knows me instantly. He said, before I was even formed, my days were already numbered. Which means that there's a plan for me. Amen. Amen. He says you're wonderfully made. And, he, and with the word wonderful out, it, it means, guess what? I'm distinctive. You might can sing, but you can't sing like I can sing. You might can write, but you can't write like I write. You might even can do a flip, but it's something about the way I do a flip. Amen. Amen. And it don't matter who, who you are in here, God has made you separate. You may teach, but it's a certain way I put my own spin to it. And see, what happens is you're going around trying to be like somebody else, and God say you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. Love yourself. Look in the mirror and kiss the mirror and say, mm, you know you bad today. All right. And what happens is we go about doing this, and we rather, we covet somebody else's gift, not realizing that when I covet your gift, you won't get my gift. Right. And what happens is I need, I, you need my gift like I need your gift. And so he goes on, he said, but then I brought it up like this. I said, um, when you look at it, that you got to realize that even you getting here was almost a miracle. I said that the average male, when, 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 and we grown in here, the kids are down, the average male when, when, during intercourse, when he releases his, his sperm, they have between 40 million to 1.2 billion sperm, which tells me if you made it out, you will survive. Will tell me, guess what? You come through that channel, and there's a lot of people going toward one goal. So, you know what? You see, what the, I forget my boy's name, Larry, or whatever. He's saying one in a million. You need to correct him next time. You need to say, what his name? Larry Graham. I'm one in 40 million. Right. You know how bad I am? I'm one in 40 million. Right. See, right there, when hell is on your, on, on, your, on your head every now and then, you gotta say, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. The night my mom and daddy hooked up. It was 40 other cats in this thing. But guess who made it through? See, that's how you got to talk to yourself. That's how I talk to myself. What's up? Then I, then I, if, I, if, I, if I get real low, if I get real low, just I say, wait, 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 I don't even go to 40. I'm one in 1.2 billion. Ain't nobody like me. Ain't nobody do it like me when I do it, how I do it, how I want to do it. That's how you got to understand. Amen. You got to tell her, hey, she might got breast, she might got butt, but she ain't me. Right. Y'all got to get, he might got muscles, he may be, what? He, may, he may be Idris Al, but Idris ain't me, amen? Right. All right, amen. Huh? <laughs> it ain't me. <laughs> That's you got to get. That, see, you got to get it. I want you when you show up. I don't want nobody else. I want you. So God marked you for distinction. And man, you were so bad when he marked you. The clay or the mold, he took it and broke it. And said, there'll never be another Dominique Johnson again. You may look like him. Joshua may look like me, talk like have a little attitude like me sometimes. But he ain't me. Praise him. And so we go back to the book of Genesis. I just gave you a recap from last week. We go back to the book of Genesis and we see that God makes man in his image and in his likeness, which means I am a reflection of God. And I'm not God, but I have certain communicable attributes of God. So where God is omniscient, 
he gave me the, uh, the idea to dream and think and to, and to, and to be uh, into reason. So they're a different attitude. But see, but what ends up happening, he creates men for fellowship and relationship. But something gets in the way of the fellowship and the relationship. One day, they are walking through the garden. They're place. Eve decides to talk to the serpent. She talking to something that she don't need to be talking to. I know y'all wait for me to get to the men, but we're going to talk about it. You know, we ain't going to stay that long. Let's just keep going. So sin enters through disobedience. And so watch this. God made man an image, but what happens is sin mars the image. It's, it's usually, watch this. So by the time you get to Galatians 5, it says that Adam had a son in his image. So the image of God is no longer perfect because sin. So watch this. Adam passes on the imperfection. So that's why when people say you have made the image of God, you're right. But that thing called sin has skewed it. And so now there's a dilemma because God has already told him the day that you eat, you shall surely die. And he's thinking physically, now you are going to die physically, but really what you have done, you've done, you died spiritually. And now we got a dilemma, so how do I not get the image of God back in? And we go in there, and man gets so bad. Watch this, let me show you this. Adam wasn't no killer, but he produced one. Which means your sin might not be what your son deal with, but because it's sin, watch this, we all drink from the same cup. Your sin might not show up like mine, but baby, you got some. I didn't kill nobody, but he produced um, my, my boy who killed his brother. So out the cup come the same thing. It's just how it show up. And man, man gets so bad. Man gets so bad. So the Jerry, that by the time we get to Genesis chapter 8, he has to wipe out the whole earth. But because he's so loving, he said, I still want fellowship with him. Let me bring Noah and his people onto this boat. And it was eight of them that were on the boat. So he said, no matter if I wipe them out, it still can start again because eight is the, the, the number of new beginning. Yeah. So even in your destruction, you can have a new beginning. Yeah. Let's keep going. Yeah. 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 So they get on and then he ends up getting to Abraham. And Abraham, he said, Abraham, I'm calling you out of this place to, 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 to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Stay with me now. I got to give you a little theology and history. Yeah. And so when he gives Abraham, he said, guess what? I'm going to give you a promise. So Abraham goes on and, 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 and he said, Abraham, I got a promise for you. I'm going to give you your own son. Abraham and, and Sarah gets, gets a little impatient. You ever try to help God out? And then mess everything up? Just real quick, just real quick. How many of y'all don't try to help God out and that thing just went? I'm, I'm going to help God out. God taking too long. God taking too long. Now, now, now Abraham was good. Abraham had a good wife. Real good one. Because I don't know no wife in, 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 in here right now. And these, these United States of America. <laughs> I don't know no wife that's going to say, look at him now, this is taking too long. You're going to have my, have my handmaid. Well, Abraham had a good, didn't he? My boy had a good. Huh? So y'all don't want to thank with me. I know y'all don't want to thank with me. That's basically what she did. She basically said, we, the, the promise ain't going to come through me. Here you go. I don't know if I would even want that headache, to be honest with you. Amen? Huh? Amen. I know. I don't know. He got trouble in paradise. Amen? And so what happens is he has something out of his flesh. Stay with me. It's a flesh move that can produce. And so now you got to ask yourself, is what I'm, see, you can be productive, but it could be something coming out your flesh. 
So he had to wait. He got the promise at 25. I mean, at, at 75. He had to wait 25 years for the promise. The Bible tells us in Hebrew that with faith and patience, you will receive the promise. Some of us got faith, but you lack it in your patience. It ain't coming quick enough, but it's in the meantime that God is working on you. So 25 years later, here come Isaac. Here's the thing if you don't, if you don't read it. At one time, Abraham's body was straight dead. Isaac wasn't the only child he had after that. When he touch you, he touch you. He said, go ahead. Not only are you going to have Isaac, read the Bible. He had more children. Abraham's a bad man. 100 years old, amen? He had spiritual Viagra, amen? <laughs> Can't beat it. Amen? I know. I know some of y'all like it. Did he say that? Yes, I did, amen? So he goes on. Joseph comes up. And after Joseph, 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 and we most most of us in here know the story. Joseph leads Pharaoh, or he leads Egypt. He's the second in command because he solves a problem. We'll talk about it a little later, but I'm just gonna throw this nugget out there. If you can solve a problem and know the problem that you can solve, you'll always have a job. Let me keep going. And so after that, they say there arose a Pharaoh who doesn't, who didn't know Joseph. And so then what has happened, what's going on during this whole time, and that he, he, had, he had one way, he had Moses waiting. I'm getting to this Galatians, stick with me. And so what happens is, he raises up Moses. And when Moses leads the people out of Egypt, he ends up, again, then we get to the, what we, some people consider the most boring book in the Bible, which is Leviticus. He then said, guess what? After you leave out somewhere, I now have to give you something to live by. Here's the issue. That the law, the law was really for one purpose and one purpose only. Let me say this too. By the way, there are like over 619 regulations in the Old Testament. No way you can keep 619. Some of us can't even say hey to somebody. We can't even say hey to somebody that step on our toe. So we get so offended and we want to be so, you, you can't get offended and be deep at the same time. Right. You, can't get, you can't be so easily offended and about you want to see miracle signs and wonders. Get your heart right, but let me just stay right. So what happens is, right, the law, what it does, hear the word, hear the word, the law makes Israel distinct from every other nation. That's the purpose of the law. The purpose is, guess what? Y'all been in bondage for over 400 years. Now when you come out around these people who have paganistic practices, I'm going to give you a set of examples to, to make you distinct from them. So what it is is the word of God makes us distinct. And so now we get to Galatians because I'm going to show you because at the end of the day, by the time we get into verse 13 in chapter 5, Paul picks back up with the story. He picks back up with the story of Abraham and Hagar and Sarah. And he says that, guess what? There are two mountains. And you got to decide which one. And this is what he said. He said, um, Sarah, he said, Abraham, he told Abraham to cast the bondwoman out. Which means the thing that you produce in your flesh, you got to get rid of it. You, the thing you the thing you done with your flesh, you got to get rid of it. I don't care how long you done had it. Y'all quiet on me now. The thing that's in your flesh. She said you got to, see watch this. Sometimes we are mad, we, we are mad at the wrong person. Really you shouldn't be mad because maybe it's God who introduced the conflict in your life anyway. I appreciate you see that preacher, you hear that, that pause right there, because they're trying to figure out how did God produce the conflict. Because God produced the conflict because you have a sinful nature, but he introduced his holy nature in there. Yeah. And now he said, guess what? You deal with it. Yeah. 
you wrestle with it. And so now we get to verse 13 where I started at. And he said, guess what? You can't live by the law. He said, you're free. But this is what you're free for. You ain't free to do what you want to do. You're free to serve one another in love. Let me tell you something. The reason why God frees you in the first place so you can be of service. You ain't free to just go heap everything on your flesh, do all you want to do. Tell somebody, I'm free to serve. I'm free to serve. And then you watch it. He said, guess what? This is how you fulfill this, through love. Jesus said, the way they'll know you my disciples, not by the car you drive. Not by how, how your house looking. Now, y'all do all that. Get you a good car. Get you a good house. But how they going to know y'all really my disciples is how you love one another. When you forgive and forbear. You know what? See, you don't talk about when you done cussed out somebody, but you won't talk about when somebody done said a couple of words to you. You don't forgot all that. Amen? You don't forgot that you showed up late, but now you late because somebody else late. Every now and then you got to extend a little grace. He says how you love one another. Yeah, so so how do I how do I how do how, how do I love somebody in 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 freedom here? And so watch this now. Uh, N.T. Wright said that the Apostle Paul he gives the law not for was not a moral system in which the Jews might make themselves good enough for God. It kept the Jews the distinct people of God. Watch this. The law was not for you to prove that you were good enough. Now the truth of the matter is until you get to the point that you're not good enough in your own self, you won't be able to do this thing. Amen. See, there's a reason why a lot, of, a lot of us, or a lot of people, I should say, feel like they don't need salvation because they try to rank their sin, not knowing that all ungodliness is sin. Right. So you feel like because you ain't killed nobody, you ain't doing the Walmart shootings, you okay. But you don't say nothing about your gossiping, your lying, or your bad body. Or your foreign case. We're going to get to it in a minute. See, because what happens is it's hard. You don't know you lost until we let you make you know you lost. You are, you think you saved, but the truth of the matter is, see, somebody had to tell you the truth. Somebody had to tell me the truth. Somebody had to say, no, 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 that ain't the way God, that ain't, that ain't God. Amen. See, you can see, nobody can't tell you that ain't God because you say you can't judge. But it ain't judge, I'm telling you the truth. Judge means I give you a final destination. Meaning you're going to heaven or hell. I can't even tell you you're going to heaven. But what I can say, if you're talking about you're a Christian, that ain't lining up with the word. Amen. I want the people who want God to send somebody to tell them the truth. Amen. Amen. When you be mad, you had to go to a job interview. And your friend let you walk out the door with a booger hanging out your nose. No, I'm going to let you see I, was, I, was, I went that way because that's what it is when you're sinning and you don't want nobody to tell you you're sinning. Yeah. You're walking around with a bug on your nose and don't want nobody to tell you. Yeah. See how silly that is? That's how silly it is for us or somebody who loves you not to tell you you're going down the wrong road. Yeah. And Jude, they said those who are going away, he said snatch them back. You got to read your Bible. Snatch them back. Now watch this. If you snatch away, I, I done tried my best. Guess what the blood, this is what Paul did. Paul, Paul say, y'all the one doing it. The blood, let me ask you something. Cause you scared of people, how many of us may have blood on our hand cause we ain't told somebody what God told us to tell them? Hear me now, you gotta have a relationship with them. Now you just can't pop up out the blue. Unless he tell you. <laughs> But it's better to receive it in relationship. You know what I'm saying? Now, I might just stay, tell, stay the same, man. You know, you might. And I, and I still got to go. You know, that's a, that joke at all. Y'all know him. I still got to go in the right way. But a joke off the street can't tell him nothing. He, we going to have to break the fight up. I'm letting you know now. Amen? If they had already knocked him out. You know what I'm saying? So right this now, he said, we are free to serve one another in love. Here it is. Uh. So by the time in Galatians, we're dealing with people who have received salvation by faith, but who want to return back to living under the law. Mm. In short, Galatians is about who are the people of God and how can you tell them the difference. And so really when he starts off this book, he says, Oh foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? And he says to them, did you not receive the Holy Ghost of your uh, 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 salvation by faith? Now you want to go back to following all these rules. He said, if you don't keep one of it, 
you can't keep all of it. And so right here, he says, you know what? This is what you're free to do. Love him by faith. And then this is what he breaks down. He says, this is the deeds of the flesh. Oh, man. So this is what you need to know right now. I gave you point number one. I ain't going to say point all the time. Now, point number one is we're free to live. We're we free to love God. I mean, we're free to serve. Point number two is that you need to know this. There are two natures. There's the spirit and then there's the flesh. And what you got to know is this. Don't think of flesh like my skin. The word really is science, right? And so what that is, is it's more, it speaks more of nature. It speaks more of nature. And then what, what, what gives me, see, what I need to know is that there, there are two natures. Now, what happens is a lot of times, we, those of us who grew up in deep Pentecostal stuff, we, we put everything as a spirit. And that's wrong. Sometimes it is a spirit or something. But a lot of times what it is, it's your flesh is a mess. You need to fast, pray, your flesh is out of control. Now, if your flesh don't get tight, then a spirit can come in and set up what they call a stronghold right now. But really what it is is that you're dealing with two natures and you really hand dealt with, the, with one of them. So he says, he says, here go with some deeds of the flesh. This ain't all of them. I'm going to give you like four that, we, that I know we did. I'm, I'm going to try not to give you all on. But watch what he says right here. He says immorality. Uh, that's fornication. That, and the word right there for immorality in the Greek is porneia. It's where we get the word porn, por, pornography from. So he's saying, get away. When you're when you fornicating, which is uh, sex outside of marriage, or looking at anything, that's, a, that's the work of the flesh. Don't, don't get quiet on me now. So it means it, it illicit sexual intercourse. What mean, see what it is. It ain't that sex is bad. Hear that. Sex is bad in the wrong context. Think about if you want to have sex out of the wrong context, some of the issues you want to be dealing with now. One be a such thing as venereal diseases. One be a such thing as baby mamas and baby daddies. See, we thank God trying to keep us from some, and what he's trying to do is keep us safe. Come on, I ain't knocking on nobody. I done been there, done that, got the t-shirt, smoked the blood, and all that with it. So all I'm saying is, when you know the truth, you got to speak the truth. See, when they try to go, like, see, they try to shut the mouth of prophets up because they want to bring up their past. That's what it is, my past. Amen. Well, you ain't done that. You ain't done. I wanna, he ain't going to use nobody perfect. Amen. When you find them, that means we're supposed to be gone from here. Amen. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yesterday, yesterday I meant to bring this up anyway. Yesterday, um, it's a model that when you're dealing with um, inmates with DJJ, God don't let me mess this up. So the dudes say they use, it, thank you, it's the credible messenger model. So what it is, if some of these guys who are locked up, if, and I'm just gonna use you, Sean, I'm not saying you ain't had nothing real, right? So Sean may not be a credible messenger for them cause Sean ain't went through what they went through. So what they'll do is, not that they slack on the, on the, on the, um, the background check, but they say, hey, here's a dude cause because of our model, an ex-gang member, an ex-dope boy who they can relate to. He's credible. Every now and then, I'm not saying you got to have somebody who just was a rank sinner up here, but every now and then will make somebody message credible. Well, make your preacher credible. Yeah. How, is that he don't walk through some temptations too. Yeah. He don't want, see, see, the Bible even says we have not a high priest. Yeah. Who ha, I'm in the book. Who have been touched by the offenders of our infirmity. Yeah. I just want to know every now and then, hey, do you at least know what it is to go and have to take a cold shower? Amen. Yeah. I want to know what it is. Do you know what it is to have to put, walk with your head down so you guys say, oh my God, she fired. You, does anybody in here know what it is to do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> and all the women, same thing. Amen. Amen. I told her she might not want me to lose these 50 pounds, but I'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, shout out. Go ahead, go ahead. 
We'll pass that today. He busy. Hey, Stacy preaching. Amen. Watch this. The next one. So the next one is impurity. That's uncleanness physically or morally. It, it, it's, it's impure motives. Your motive is jacked up. Right? It's a work of the flesh. You happen, but your, you got a motive behind it. You ever figure out that when you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost don't let you know now they're trying to get something. Don't. Let me tell you something. As, as, as they say, when people show you who they are, believe it. I'm talking about on a consistent basis. Amen? So you're going to have, watch this, as you mature, you're going to you have to understand when somebody have a flesh moment and when it's just their character as well. Yeah. We all may have a flesh moment. So a flesh moment you may have more grace with, but you let them know now that you're in your flesh right now. Amen? Yeah. But if you, if you keep seeing them do what they, what they do, that's who they are. Yeah. Don't, be, don't be smooth, don't be fooled. Amen? Yeah. The next one, sensuality. Watch this. That means, watch this, it's licentiousness. Ooh, watch this. Wantonness. Unbridled lust. Accent. Shame. Shamelessness. You just ain't got no shame about what you do. And then brag about it. I'm keeping it real. I do what I want to do. See, see that's, that's your flesh. Let me tell you what some, un, some unbridled lust was in my day. 1994 Atlanta, Georgia. Ninety-four through ninety-six when we knew ninety-eight. Atlanta, Georgia, on the highway, no, just unbridled, just debauchery at its best. <laughs> Stop in the middle of the highway debauchery. See, we 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 talking about ooh, they, we show party, we straight in our flesh. Do you think about what we think about that? You're in the middle of the highway. Do it with you. I'm not about letting it all hang out. This is where we at right now. Lord, I look back and say, He showed keep him. He showed kept him. Can anybody say he kept me? Come on now. Come on now. Say he kept me. Uh-huh. I mean, you gotta be able to say he kept me. He kept me. Good God Almighty. By them road trip with the brothers and everything. I done did a, a two-state road trip in one night. I done went to Alabama, came back to Savannah, and still getting it. Let's go. The debauchery. So I figured when he saved me, if I went hard for the devil like that, I got to go hard for God. And some of us coming in the kingdom, now you want to talk about, it ain't wise. You ain't did nothing. Now some of us, you're right, you need to say that. But some of us just ain't did nothing. Don't take all that. You ain't did nothing. Sensuality. Just, I mean, just good. I mean, you ever just see somebody, that ain't shame or nothing. Just let it all, just do what you want to do. He said, that's, that's your flesh. Tell somebody, don't get in the flesh. The next one is idolatry. Here goes one. That's the worship of false gods. Now, we ain't going to talk about it. See, y'all thinking just idolatry is having a little Buddha up, set up somewhere. Well, the truth of the matter is your child can become an idol. Your job can become an idol. Your degree can become an idol. Your husband or wife can become an idol. You got to see, it ain't came but one person sit on the throne. So, guess what? You may be an idol to yourself. Your opinion is an idol. Well, my opinion, Trump, you wrong. You just as wrong with two left feet. <laughs> here go one. Here go one. Sorcery. I know y'all think I don't. I don't do no sorcery. Here go the Greek word for for sorcery. Pharmakia. Oh, I'm coming. Oh, I'm coming. The use of medicine, Jesus. drugs, sp let's just stay down. <laughs> Pharmacia, where we get pharmacy from. This is for all y'all talking about that weed come from the earth. <laughs> <laughs> it 
if you now, now, now my, my thought has evolved since I've grown. But if you not, if you ain't got no CBD for glaucoma okay. or for cancer, uh-huh. you in witchcraft. What you smoking for? You ain't hurt. Oh, y'all quiet. Good God, y'all quiet. Y'all quiet. I'm going to take the edge off. Witchcraft. Sorcery. You ain't using it for medicine. You use it to get high, which is altering your mind state. Y'all don't want truth. That's all right. I'm going to give it to you anyway. You be all deep. It comes from the earth. It does. When you sick, probably. You ain't sick. You okay right now. Keep burning. You, it, what you doing? You're like, now that day you can't deny you don't heard true. Amen. See what they did was back then they used drugs to conjure up stuff. Amen. They used the dope to get you high, to get you high so you can start doing stuff you want to do. Think about it. Some of y'all scared anyway. You won't even have no fight unless you took your bumper song. <laughs> let me hit this. Let me drink. Let me get drunk so I can say what I want to say. Cow. So what you need to do. I got some G's in here who don't who didn't need all that. I ain't gonna call their name, but we not talk no play. We ain't need now. We probably that problem was in our system, but at the end of the day, we ain't need all that. Say the wrong thing. Right. <laughs> but here's the thing, though: when you practicing that, that's a work of the flesh, and you don't need it. Don't let all these people fool you out your inheritance. I ain't nothing, see, it heroin done took a no, no, no came back up. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't nothing, I ain't nothing good about strapping your arm up, mm-hmm. putting poison in your system. Yes, yes. Nothing, nothing. Stuff they smoking now, I don't even know what they smoking now. I, I mean. I'm not trying to stay on there too long. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I'm saying. When I was smoking, it was just green. Now nah, they just red, half purple. I mean, I'm just trying to think. Under the water, dry. I don't like what y'all smoking. I mean, how high are you trying to get? That right there, you got to go through that great link. That tell you right now that you doing something wrong and crazy. Now let me talk to the other half of the country. This might be live, right? Uh, uh, go on Facebook. See, we want to talk about crack addicts, but it ain't no different in a fluent neighborhood when you hook to prescription drugs. It's the same thing. Coke addict, prescription drug addict. You still an addict. So you want to come in African American neighborhood and talk about crack, but you getting your doctor to write you over prescriptions. You still an addict. You just dressed it up. So, I'm going to say this last one. I'm going to go. I ain't going to go through all long. Outbursts of anger. That's fierceness, indignation, or passion. We're going to get to the altar today. Uh, some of y'all, any little thing blow you off. Anything just tick you off. You need to get to the altar today. Outbursts of anger. That means, see, I'm going go to go through the fruit. That means you ain't got no self control, you ain't got no gentleness. You ain't got no patience. You know, when you blow up, you just, you just, some of y'all just tornadoes. You just hurricanes. Ready to, you're a volcano ready to explode. I wish somebody would. You waiting on it. You get out the car ready. You supposed to be a child. You supposed to be the, blessed are the peacemakers. You coming in ready to fight. Uh, I wish they would say something to my child. You know what I said to your child? Your child might be bad right now, amen? Yeah. Your child might be in the wrong. Yeah. You better find out for you and your child both get embarrassed up in here. Yeah. Yeah. Child spin spitballs, you talking about heart. And then you going up now, shamelessness with your, with your, with your house clothes on. Yeah. And a bonnet. With some slide in fur bedroom shoes. And you left that sorry joke at home in the bed, talking about let me know when you get back. 
Hallelujah. My last one, and we're going, we're going to go on carousing. Wild parties. Mine say a village festival, revel. You just turned up. Turn up. Walk in. I mean, you ain't at a nice event. We walk in there, you on the table. Turn <laughs> your head like a helicopter. You just going in. Some of y'all don't know about Peter Pablo. Don't worry about it. God will catch you later. Amen. He'll catch you later. You just standing there. You just, you just wild party. Words of the flesh. The words of the flesh. Then he said, yes, well, you want to inherit the kingdom. Those who practice these things, you will not inherit the kingdom. But then he comes back and he said, here's the spirit. The, the, the spirit, watch this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is the DNA of God. They say, you can do all that stuff, man. That's the work of the flesh. You got dissension. You got, you beefing with people. You, 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 you envying. You in your flesh. I want to challenge each one of you in here right now is that I want you to find somebody that you can, that can tell you you in your flesh. And it's okay. We all need it. People tell me you in your flesh. I got one that really tells me. I mean, <laughs> you in your flesh. But I thank God for. Amen. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cause I really want to tell us sometimes, God love you. He sure love you. <laughs> for my visitors, they don't know what they God love you right now. She was talking to me that morning, bro. She said, mm, see, you, see, you're getting offended right now. I said, I'm not, I'm not getting offended. I'm trying to. <laughs> I mean, I have to preach here in, in about an hour or two. I just want to explain my part for a minute. I, I can't do that, can I? Can, can, the, can, the, can, the, can the court allow me to say something right here? You ever feel like you won't try? Can the court allow? Can I approach <laughs> Your Honor, can I there's something. I need an attorney. Can I? I don't, bro. I got a public defender. I ain't winning nothing where I am. Let me say this. We're going to get it right out of here. Why this? This is what Paul, Paul says though, at the end of this. He said, We have crucified our flesh. So there's two ways you crucify your flesh. In Romans, he said, You must reckon. You must reckon yourself dead to sin. Right here, see, see what happens is, yes, sin may be present, but, he, but the Bible says God is a very present help. So again, you got to reckon yourself dead. See, theologically, while we're losing it, we don't understand what has really happened. And so theologically, we have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And so guess what? The old me really is no longer. The issue is I carry around the old brain sometimes, but that's why he said be transformed by renewing your mind. But the only way you're going to do that is to present yourself a living sacrifice. So you're trying to be transformed without presenting yourself. Transformation can't happen until you lay down on the altar and you say, do something with me. But here you go, how do I get God's DNA? I'm glad you asked. First Peter 1 and 23 said, we have been born again of incorruptible seed. Watch this, whatever I'm born of, I got to have his DNA. I can't be born of Walter and Linda Johnson and not have their DNA. So I can't be born of the word of God and not have his DNA. So what God does, he says, look, I see what's going on. I got to clear out your heart. So what I do, though, the seed of God is implanted into the heart of man. And watch this. It's not that you need patience. Because <laughs> it's one fruit with nine aspects. It ain't nine different fruits. It's one fruit, and you slice it nine ways, it makes the one fruit. The major is love and out of all that flowing. So it's not that you need patience. You get to cultivate it. 
because whatever you are born of is in there. So you don't have to, hear me, hear me, hear me. It's already in you. And the only way it's going to come out is that it's cultivated. So he'll put you in situation to see, to let you know whether or not you need to work on your cultivation of patience. He'll put you in and see if you need to work on long suffering. Because your mama them gave you everything when you were little. And so now when somebody tell you to wait, you throw a temper tantrum. Ooh, y'all mad at me. It's okay. I ain't, I, ooh, I ain't, ooh, I ain't any good. I'm sorry, I don't do this all the time. But uh, So when that seed is formed, everything that you need is in the seed. When you come in, watch this. It says the fruit of the Spirit, which tells me, watch this. See, what we are doing, gifts are given. We judging people more on their gifts than their fruit. So what we do, we put, we put them up. We put them up. We, we, put, we put them up. We put them up because they, they can sing, they can rap, they can do that. And nothing's wrong with that. But they say that gifts are given without repentance. And your gift will work, God will let your gift work because he sometimes he's more concerned about the people than your ratchetness. So don't think it's because your gift working that he pleased. What he really want to know is how are you when you, ain't, when you ain't operating in your gift? How are you at home when nobody can see you? How are you at the grocery store? See, how you, see, see, that's what he did. So why did, just like, like the Holy Spirit, just like he gave them the loft to be distinct, he gave us the Holy Spirit for us to be distinct. And he said, this is how you tell the difference between the two now. If you're doing this whole list over here, uh, sensuality, fornicating, and that, you, you, you in the flesh. But over here is what you got to know. See, why did, the Holy Ghost will keep you. The Holy Ghost tells you, uh-uh. The Holy Ghost tell you, even though you mad, let me be good to him right now. Have our situation right now because we wanted to do stuff our way. Some of you in here, we got to grow up. You want to blame everybody for your issue except you. And the truth of the matter is, you, we won't get better till we say it's on me. You want to blame mama, daddy, uncle, Boo-boo, Johnny boy, whoever. And guess what? God said, no, it's you right now. You've been going to church all these years. It's time for you to take some ownership. What I'm 44, what I look like talking about, yeah, my dad was an addict and all that. That's a true story. What I look like at 44 saying, I can't really take care of change. Sometimes you got to go on and suck your guts up and, let's, and walk in the Holy Ghost. If you need some therapy, call Cheryl or somebody and go get you and go sit with somebody. I'm a proponent of that too. But the truth of the matter is, some of this stuff we holding on to, God said, I've delivered you from it. You need to walk. You got everything that's according to life and God that's in you. Shake yourself and get up. You don't supposed to look like your cousin them. I don't care how they going out. I mark you distinct. Well, I, I, I'm an old school folk. They just say that that's who has in this house. Yeah. I don't care what John and them do, yeah. but in this house. Yeah. So that was God saying, I don't care what your cousin and your friend them doing. They ain't making to do that. But in my kingdom, yeah. in my kingdom is how we act. In my kingdom. And the thing is, guess what? I don't. You ain't got to follow a bunch of rules. What I want you to do is fall in love with my spirit. And I'll lead you into the truth. He said, I'll take out that stony heart and give you a heart of flesh and write my commandments on your heart. You keep trying to just go to the book, but your heart not being transformed. He said, open up your heart and I'll cultivate all this stuff in you. The excuse is over. You got God DNA in you. You got a miracle working. Resurrecting power in your belly. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. I'm not making light of your trial. I'm not making light of your trauma. What I am telling you though is that guess what? If God be for you, 
Who can be again? Amen. Now thanks be unto God, who always calls up the triumph in Christ Jesus. I'm more than a conqueror off in this thing. If I'm losing, there's something wrong. And then if I'm losing, then I need to be learning what's going on. What, what, see, you got to do some self-evaluation. Where I done messed up at right here. And see, the thing coming like this, you got to realize this right here. God, maybe you are not, not why is this happening to me. What you want me to learn? My senior year of basketball in college, senior year, dude, I'm dribbling, dude doodling. We call it doodling when you, you're not really going back, though. You kind of like just, so bro, he act like he going, I mean, you going to go or not? So I threw it. I hate, I hate turnovers. Of course, it's a turnover. I go down, dude go up and going at it hard. I'm talking about I done, I done jumped though, hit the backbone and everything. When I came down, my, my, my knee, I twist my ankle. I twist my ankle where I really like this, 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 it stretched this ligament. Didn't break my ankle. I literally sat out most of my senior year. And I was like, okay, well, last year. I actually didn't play enough games. I could have took a medical red shirt. But what happened is I just didn't want to. I was like, Mentally, I was like, I'm finna get my degree. I'm good. I didn't quit. I just was like, I'm finished, really. I wasn't going to the league. Probably had a chance to go overseas for a couple of years. But here's the thing. I learned this, Mac. This is what God allowed me to learn. I'm not saying he called it an incident. He allowed me to learn that life is bigger than basketball. He allowed me to learn that life it's bigger than basketball, and as it unfolds every day, I see that, guess what? I got a much better call, better, bigger collar than, than basketball for you. Hear me now. I don't know if some of you have fell, ever fell in love with basketball and the sport like I did, or with anything. One time I, I get up at five o'clock in the morning, shoot, work out. That's all I used to do. All right? I'm going on this. And so when you learn when something has been taken away from you like that, you got to have the wherewithal to say, what is going on right here? Kind of truth of the matter is, truth of the matter, I'm trying to look at this. I probably was, how much you weigh, Matt? 205? Two something? One something? <laughs> In my best weight, I was 195, 205. My best weight, probably there. Now, the, the truth of the matter is, here, here, your 40, I tell all athletes this, hear me in the spirit while I was playing this, your 40 time going to go down. Your vertical going to eventually go low. And what God was teaching me is, you're going to have to learn how to live life. You're going to have to learn how to live life. Your identity was wrapped up in that. You're going to learn how to live life. What happened when the popcorn start popping? The chili just ain't cheering no more. There are people, go ahead, Justice. There are people, particularly some war veterans, and all my veterans, you correct me later on if I'm wrong, because they're so used to the adrenaline, it's hard for them to just live normal life. They always got to have some, particular those who do the bomb stuff, put the suits on, because it's always this rush of adrenaline. And here's what God is saying. I don't want your identity in that. I want your identity in me, but I'm making you distinct. You have my DNA on you. I'm not changing your fearfulness and wonderfulness. I just want your flesh to die. You still had a gift that I gave you, but I want you to operate in the gift with my Holy Spirit. Lord, I got, I, 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 I have outbursts of anger too much. I'm going to call all on now so you can come up. Nobody won't know what you're coming up for. Lord, my flesh is a mess. I love you. Lord, I really do love you. But you're going to have to do something for your boy now. You're going to have to do something for your girl now. I love you. I'm trying to do this thing right. But you know I done been tapped before my... 
Lord, I'm addicted to this smoke right here. I feel like I got, instead of going to pray or talk, I'm going to other substances, Lord. That ain't right. That, you made me distinct. I don't handle my issue the same way the world handles my issue. Sometimes, Lord, I can have a nasty attitude. Sometimes my tongue can be real sharp. Ain't nobody did nothing to me. I must have got it from my mama or somebody. But now I'm coming to the point there's no excuse. But I have no governor on me. When I party, I like to party. Matter of fact, so the saints won't see me, I go out of town. And I turn all the way up. These start coming out, you won't do. 